Now that we have created a few different sections, let's go ahead and try out a section that includes blocks. If we go to the reference to the documentation that was included with the last lecture, as well as will be included with this lecture as well, and we go down to this part over here and we click on blocks, we can see that sections can define blocks in their schema. Blocks are containers of settings and contents which can be added, removed, or reordered within a section. So basically, blocks are kind of like sections within sections. And it's going to make more sense once we actually build something. So let's go ahead inside of our code and inside of sections, we'll create a new file and we'll call this logo list.liquid. And we'll just create a section that contains up to four logos. So let's go ahead at the very top, we'll create a new div with the class name of logo list. And now inside of here, we will have an H2 with the class name of heading and center. And inside of here, we can just say, like before, section.settings.title. And we'll include the title there. Now for the next part, what we will do is we will render a piece of content for each block that we're going to have. But before that, let's go ahead and create a new div with the class name of logo container. And inside of here, what we can say is liquid logic. And we can output four block in section dot blocks. And then well, let's close this for loop. And now inside of here is where we will actually have the HTML structure for each of our blocks. And what we will have for each of our blocks is simply an image. So we'll just say image. And then for the source, we can now say block.settings.image. So now, as we can see here at the top, we were referencing the section settings, but now inside of the block, we're actually referencing the block settings. And we can just remove the alt for now and save that. Now let's deal with the schema. So the first part of the schema will be the title. So we can just go back inside of our image with text and we can copy the text with the title. And now we'll say name will be logo list. And then for the settings, we will only have one. So let's open this array. And inside of it, we'll just paste this text type with the ID of title. And this will be basically our title for that section. And we can change this one to logo list. So now just after the settings array, let's put a comma and create a new object. And this one will be called blocks. And this will also be an array. Now inside of the blocks, we also want to have an object. So let's open that and we will have a type. And for this type, we will say logo image. So the type for the blocks are actually a little bit different than the types for the actual schema. And we can basically name these whatever we want. So logo image is not something that Shopify specifically created for us to use, but it's just a type that we are basically creating for our own blocks. And then just underneath that, we can say name, and we'll call this logo, just capitalize this. And now we can create settings. So inside of these settings is where we will define the content types that Shopify actually provides us. So let's create another object. And inside of here, we'll say type. And this one will be image picker. And ID will be just image. And then for the label, we can say image. Or we can actually say logo image. 
Now we're not going to have a default here, but we can also have a default, like a placeholder or something else. And then we can also actually add a URL. So let's create another object. And this type will be a URL. And so basically we will make this image clickable and we'll add ID and we'll say link. And then for the label, we'll say logo link here. And then we can also add info and we can just say here that this is optional. All right, perfect. What we can do now is going down to the block array, which is just over here, we can create the presets now. So the presets for this will create a little bit differently because we'll also add some presets for the blocks as well. So let's open an object inside of here and we can say name and the name will be logo list and then category will be images as well. And now we can actually add blocks. So for the blocks, we will open this array. And inside of here, we can say type logo image. Perfect. So now let's put a comma here and we'll create four of these. So basically, whenever we select this section, it will automatically pre-fill four images for us. Okay, so we created the schema. It's definitely a little bit more complicated than the one we created before. So let's go ahead and save this and make sure we didn't make a typo anywhere. And nope, we're good. The most common typos that I see is missing these commas, and it's one that I made in the last lecture myself, but also not closing an array or an object. So keep an eye out for these common mistakes. Now let's go ahead back inside of our HTML layout and around this image tag, we can basically add an A tag as well. So the A tag will be block.settings.link because we named our ID link here. And now let's move this down and we can move the image inside of here. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's add a class name to our a tag. Now I can say class equals logo link. And so let's save this and go inside of our application.scss. And just down here, we can create a new comment and we'll call this one start logo list. And actually one thing I still want to do is add to this logo list class name, a class name of section. And that's because we've already predefined that. So we have already actually styled these class names as well. So we just need to style this logo container now. So let's go ahead and choose the logo container and we'll display flex here and then we'll say justify content space between and also for the logo link we can say dot logo link and we'll say that we want it to be max width of 25 percent and then the image will be width equals 100 percent so let's now save this and go ahead back into our customizer and add this section. So we can see here that a new section appeared called logo. And it pre-filled our settings with four logos. But since we don't have any default images for these logos, it's not appearing to be anything. So let's go ahead and select some images here. So I have some logos available for us to use here. So let's go ahead and select them and see what we get. So we have this error. So let's go ahead and save that. 
And this is actually a very good learning moment as well, because we forgot to include something for our image source. So going back inside of the logo list for the image, we need to add a filter, which is image URL, and then we'll select the master. So let's go ahead and save that and go back here and see if that fixed it. Perfect. So as you can see, those small details can make a big difference when working with liquid. So let's now also add some more images here. All right, perfect. So we added four logos and then we can actually just reorder them as well pretty easily, just like you would in the Shopify sections customizer. And then we can also remove a block just by clicking over here, remove block. And as you can see, the block now disappeared and we can add as many blocks as we want. So let's save that and we can add another block. But as we can see now, it kind of messed up just because of the way that we organized our CSS. So we can do something to limit this. So if we click save here, now going back inside of our logo list, just above the settings here, we can give another configuration. And this one is called max blocks. And we'll give this one a value of four. So basically it will limit the user to only input four blocks. And now we can make sure that our CSS works for the amount of blocks that are going to be in the section. And if we go back here and refresh, and now we try to add more blocks and we can't because it says four out of four blocks are used, the lead to add more. So it's a pretty nice feature here because it doesn't allow the user to actually break the website and you can know exactly where you're going to be working with. So the images are pretty big actually. So let's go ahead and change that as well. Inside of the application.scss, we can say here display flex. And we'll give it justify content center and align item center. And then the image max width will be 50%. So let's go ahead and save that and refresh our website. And we can see now that the images are much smaller and more evenly distributed. And let's also add some padding to the top here. So for the logo container, let's go ahead and add padding top of 50 pixels. And now this section looks pretty good. The other thing we can still do is actually add a link. So let's go ahead back inside of our customizer and we can choose a link here. So from the link menu, we can choose either something from our own shop, which is collections, product, pages, blogs, and policies and stuff like that. Or we can actually just start typing a URL and we can say www.shopify.com. And we can just click on this one. And now the link will take us to shopify.com. So you can get really creative with the Shopify section blocks and do a lot of different things with it and allow your merchants to create all kinds of different sections without having to actually jump into the code again. So let's jump into the next section now where we're going to finish up the footer of the website, the menu drawer, and just some small details to polish up the website and make it look production ready. I'm super excited to finish this project with you. I'll see you in the next lecture.